pension refund, FICA, and Roth switch, all on today's Fednababble. This is Fednababble, where Kevin and Cassie make federal retirement benefits understandable for humans like you. These two don't hold back as they answer questions from the FedPilot workshops and webinars or from questions submitted by you at fednababble.com. Welcome to today's Fed Bible, um, where we're going to take your questions um, that have come in through Kevin's workshops and webinars, and also that I get from our advisor team, and talk about them and see if we can help you all out a little bit. Yep. That's all. It's all about trying to clear them up. And because they are so darn confusing, let's make them understandable for humans like you. And the first one is... Oh, a long one. Okay. Whew. After OPM processes your retirement paperwork. Okay. So usually, you know, that that takes a, could take up to a year or so. Easy. <laughs> if you're mm-hmm. messing things up. Do you get a lump sum check for the difference they owe you from the 55 to 60% interim check? Okay. Let's just talk about that right there. Um, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we need to stop right there. We're time out. Um, Cassie, real quickly, talk about the interim check and this 55 to... I don't know where they got this because I, I didn't say this in the webinar, 55 to 60%. So why don't you clear that up a little bit? Yeah, so after somebody submits their paperwork, um, or I should say their HR submits it to OPM, then OPM starts processing your paperwork and they will give you an interim check of anywhere between 40 to 60% of what your calculated pension should be or is right. estimated to be. Um, so that's the interim check that they're talking about because they're gonna you're gonna receive that amount, whatever OPM decides that amount should be. <laughs> <laughs> Between the time that OPM is, or I should say, well, the t- during the time that OPM is processing your retirement paperwork. So from the time you retire to the time they finalize that um, retirement paperwork and, and your pension amount, then you're going to receive a, an interim check or a, a percentage of what your estimated or calculated pension should be. Right. Now, during that time, the reason it's 40 to 60%, we don't know. We've seen even much lower, but that's on a rare circumstance, but it happens. Um, the reason they don't give you the full pension check is because what they're doing is they're taking money and they're holding it to pay for things like healthcare, things like your faculty, but they actually don't pay it until later. And so if they have estimated right, it should be right around how much they actually will pay it out later but sometimes they'll over withhold or sometimes they'll under withhold if they over withhold then in this question that yes you will get the extra amount but it's not going to be that full amount because again part of that's going to go to things like healthcare and other things um but if they underhold you're gonna have to pay that back thankfully i don't think that happens too often i think they over withhold if anything yeah i think they do that on purpose yeah Um, and so the the rest of the question is do you get a lump sum check for the difference they owe you from the 55 to 60 percent interim check and so essentially once opm finalizes that pen or your your retirement application then you're going to receive a lump sum whatever is owed to you um from that 60 to 40 percent that that they didn't give you right yeah. and so they're going to give you all of that money in one lump sum then the question so yes, yeah they will they will pay you a lump sum check once the retirement application is finalized they determine your pension amount and you know withhold whatever they need to then they're going to give you that that money back then the question comes at the end here, could that potentially put you in a higher tax bracket? And you bet. Yeah, it could. And that that's a great, again, another great question to be thinking about, right? This is a question that I think very few people, it, it's not on the radar. They don't even think about this, but it's something to definitely think about for sure. 
Yeah, and this is really good, uh, you know, when it goes back to that timing of the retirement, because essentially if you're retiring in December and it takes OPM a year to process that paperwork so that the full year of, say, 2021, you're not receiving your full pension amount, so you're in the lower tax bracket, what have you, and, and, and you're not getting, say, the full SRS benefit either, or the SRS benefit at all because they don't give it to you while you get the interim check. But once they finalize that, then not only are they giving you the pension, right, that lump sum amount that, that you're entitled to, but they're also giving you your SRS payment, that can definitely, you know, put you in, uh, in a different tax bracket than you were the year previously, or even as an employee, depending on what that um, special retirement supplement is, you know, so you, it's not just a pension, because um, then now for 2022, you're getting your full pension amount, you've received that lump sum payout for the extra 40 to 60% or whatever from that whole year previously that you didn't mm -hmm. receive it from OPM. Plus you're getting the full special retirement supplement and you're getting the payout for the special retirement supplement lump sum check. Yep. That could be that adds 10, up $15,000, $20,000. I mean, I don't know what that looks like for you, but you know, these are, these are definitely things to, to consider when you're looking at, you know, when do I retire? Is my retirement application package healthy enough to where it's not going to take long for OPM to uh, to finalize, you know, all of these different pieces that people, you know, need to think about. So very, very good question. And yeah. the answer is yes, um, they'll give you the lump sum payout. And yes, that could, could screw up your tax bracket <laughs> that you're thinking you might be in. So definitely something to to talk to somebody about. Um, a financial professional is is going to be able to determine this, um, and especially one who understands the federal benefits. They're going to be able to help you out with that timing and what that looks like, um, and you know whether that's to tell you, hey, you should wait a year because you've got to do X, Y, Z before you submit that paperwork to make sure that you know the processing goes well, or you know you're you're good to go or, or whatever that looks like, they're going to help you be able to determine that. So, you know, in the, in the workshops I do, we have a discussion and I ask, okay, what expenses do you think will go down when you retire? And invariably I get taxes and I have to pause and I say, well, it depends, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, because they may actually go up if you don't do it right and we have seen that happen so it's really important to get this figured out beforehand rather than be stuck with it and go oh whoops i did that wrong well now it's too late unfortunately because yeah. we're taxing for the last for the previous year and there's nothing much you can really do about the previous year now okay next question if that employee has already reached Oh, that employee, that, that mysterious employee, I don't know what employee they're talking about, but that An employee, employee, right, that, that employee, uh-huh, has already reached the maximum amount of FICA, which is Social Security on your pay stub, tax for the, for the year, and then is rehired. So, okay, so I'm assuming that someone reaches the maximum amount of FICA that they can contribute then mm -hmm. they retire, then they get rehired again, uh, I assume as a rehired annuitant. Is it correct to assume that they will not be subject to the FICA tax during the rest of the year? Or, you know, I guess not even a rehired annuitant, if they were maybe even, if they got another job, would they not be yeah. subject to the FICA tax for the rest of the year? Yeah. Yeah, and the answer is no, they wouldn't be subject to the FICA tax because they've already right. meet, met that cap for that year yep. for their pay. Yep. Right. No matter and who so, you work for. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whether you're a federal employee or you separated from a service and now you're going into uh, you know, the the public sector. I mean, whatever that looks like for you, um, if you have met the cap for Social Security for those maximum um uh, deductions from your pay, 
then you're not going to pay that for the rest of the year. Okay. And it doesn't matter what position you're in. I have a question for you then. That just made me think of a question. So I'm going to throw in a, an extra question here. And, and, and this is kind of off the wall a little bit, but let's say I retire, I've maxed out my FICA, and then I go get hired somewhere else. I'm a part-time greeter at Walmart or something. Does Walmart go to Social Security and say, how much have they paid this year? Or do they just start taking it out and it works out? Or, I mean, that's I, a good I don't know how that's done. I that hadn't thought of that. It should all be recorded through, through Social Security. And so if they start taking those deductions, then they should be able to see you've already met that max. Right. And but do they do that check that though? Amount. Huh? I, I I don't know. That that's a great question yeah. to ask. Yeah. That's a great question. But I, I ask mean, your employer. Think about it though. If you are starting a new job, right? Then you're filling out that W two, and that's going to whomever it needs to go to the IRS, Social Security, what have you. To uh, well, not Social Security, but uh, to the IRS. But so somewhere along the line, somebody goes should say something um, to make sure that those deductions are not being taken from your paycheck. Right. Okay. I will tell you this, just because you've met the cap for Social Security does not mean that you've met the cap for Medicare. So Medicare still go. takes out contributions because there's no limit to the amount contributed to Medicare. Very um, good point. So I just want to make sure that we're clear. That way you're not like, why am I contributing to one and not the other? Aren't they the same? They're not. They're two completely separate programs. Um, Social Security has the cap of the amount that you contribute per year. Medicare does not. So just be aware of that. <laughs> good, good, good. I like that. All right. How can you switch to Roth? Well, <laughs> that, I love that. Nice, short question. And yeah. Well, I think we, you know, in, in past episodes recently, we've talked about how you can't switch your present money from your regular traditional TSP to a Roth TSP. That just cannot be done, right? So I'm. let's right. take this question as if they're saying, all right, I want to contribute from here on out or I want to start contributing to my Roth. How can I switch to con start contributing to my Roth? How do they do that, Cassie? Well, that's easy. You go to tsp.gov, you log into your account, and you switch your contribution. Um, there you go. Here to from traditional to Roth, right? That's that's the easiest yep. to do it from here on out. But you cannot switch what you already have in the traditional TSP over to the Roth side. And I want to also be clear that just because you've switched your contributions to Roth contributions your matching money still will be contributed as traditional TSP income mm -hmm. and so, uh, or contributions. And so the match that you receive from the federal government will always be traditional. So you will still see that traditional balance increase, not only based on the growth, but based on the agency uh, matching contributions as well. So the only thing that gets counted as Roth will be your contributions to that right. side. And, I, and I'll throw one more question in there that it, this leads people to that we, we could probably use as another question another time. And it's that if I put 100% of my money into Roth, do I still get the match? And the answer is yes, except yes. that what you just said, it goes into the traditional side, not the Roth side. Mm -hmm. So... You know, there's a well, bonus question for everyone. Up to the five percent, right? They're not matching up to whatever you're contributing yeah. if you're over contributing or what have you. So, um, and also you can switch to a Roth. It's just not in the TSP, right? right. Um, that's a different strategy. Whether you should or should not is another question. Like we can go on and on about. <laughs> mm -hmm. what different questions this leads to and, and you know what's the best program and and all of these different things and is that even a good idea depending yeah. on what different buckets of money that you have i don't even know if switching to a roth in general uh, switching your contributions to roth is going to be a good thing right it very well may not be <laughs> yeah right yeah so, so that line, is where 
financial yes. professional about that. That is where you have to go in and talk to a financial professional who understands the TSP, not just understands investments, understands the TSP and how it works. Because, you know, I, I find that a lot of uh, a lot of people have a misunderstanding of how does this, you know, okay, the an IRA works this way. And then they think the TSP works the same way. Well, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And you have to know right. when it does and when it doesn't and when how to take advantage of one or the other. So there's it's always going back and forth. So again, a financial a, a professional who understands this is going to be very, very important for everyone here. And again, if you go to fedandbabble.com, you can get that basically free no cost, no obligation, no sales pitch, just to take a look at your benefits to see what's going on. Cassie. Yeah, because before you can make a plan or ask any of those further questions, you have to know where you're starting from, right? You've got to know right. what's in traditional. You've got to know what your Fegley looks like, what your what your annual leave payout's going to be and how that's going to affect taxes, what your special retirement supplement, like all of these yeah. different things that could affect your taxes that uh, aren't taxed. Like what are those different things and what do they look like? Are they federally taxed? Are they state tax? You know, all of these different things that um, really can affect you in that retirement. Uh, you know, and, and it's not just when you retire, right? right. It's your retirement so far not. in advance. Yes. Exactly. What is my FEHB cost going to do 10 years from now, 20 years right. from now, if it continues to increase the way that it has been the past few years, right? So these are things that we want to be able to, to help people understand, to get them from a place where they're, uh, they know where they are, what things are projected out to be, so that way they can really strategize what those different buckets of money need to be to plan the best for the whatever retirement goals and and uh, picture you have for yourself. You know, let's let's put all these different pieces of the puzzle together, take action, go to fednababble.com, um, get the report from us so that way we can help you. And it's not, let me just be clear though, it's not me and Kevin preparing these reports. Well, I prepare them, you, but. <laughs> right. <clears throat> we're not giving you the report in person, right? We're having one of our trusted advisors or, or one of our advisors in our trusted network reach out to you to get the information, um, to get the report to you. So that way, you know, we can really make sure that you have somebody who's going to be able to help you with all of these other things that need to be considered too, not just your benefits, but, um, you know, tax implications, um, you know, whatever that looks like for you. On. Yep. Yep. Yes. And and as always, if you would, please like, subscribe and share this with your coworkers so that they, too, are prepared for retirement. And I don't care if they're younger or they're about to retire. Everyone needs to know what their plan is going to be before retirement. And and the earlier, honestly, the better. Last yeah. words, Cassie. Take action. Take positive action. For your retirement so that way you can feel comfortable and confident during those most precious years for your life thanks everyone take care to get cassie's comprehensive report on your federal retirement benefits at no cost no obligation and no sales pitch go to fednababble.com while you're there submit a question for them to answer on the show